From a summertime swing in the park to a trip to the zoo in the fall, spending time in the sunshine is an integral part of childhood. So much so that 80% of a person's lifetime exposure to the sun occurs before they turn 18. This would merely be an enviable fact of childhood if not for one important statistic. It has been shown in studies that children and teenagers in particular who have more than five sunburns have an increased risk of two to three fold of later developing melanoma. Melanoma, a potentially lethal form of skin cancer, is 20 times more common today than it was when our grandparents were growing up. Well, look at this sunburn, does it hurt? Sort of. Mm -hmm. I think we're gonna have to talk about how to use sunscreen today. And while the disease generally develops in adulthood, children who play unprotected outdoors may be laying the groundwork for future health problems. I think it's very important for parents to take sun exposure seriously and from the very first moment to protect the child. Because a child's skin contains less pigment than an adult's, children, especially infants, are more likely to burn. In fact, when unprotected on a sunny day, a child can develop a painful sunburn in under 10 minutes. Susan Long knows this and isn't taking any chances with nine-month-old Mackenzie or two-year-old Taylor. With a history of skin cancer in her family, she has her own skin checked regularly by a dermatologist, and she takes extra precautions with her children. They actually have sunscreen put on every single morning before they even get clothed, regardless of whether or not they go outside. And the whole reason behind doing this is because I want it to become um, what I would call like a routine. I want them to th think it's totally natural that you're supposed to put sunscreen on. When they're old enough to start making their own choices, they'll still think, hey, maybe I should do this. You know, this is something that I've always done. You know, mom's always done, so I should do it too. Sticking to the shade between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. when the sun's rays are most intense is the surest way to avoid sun damage, but it's not always easy. Right now, Taylor's at an age when she likes to explore. Um, part of exploring is going outside and learning about, you know, the birds and the bugs and the, the grass and just sort of going through the whole exploration stage. So it's hard to say, even for a parent to even have to stay inside. I just think it's somewhat unrealistic. And so I think that you just simply have to instead prepare yourself to be outside. And parents shouldn't assume that an overcast day means it's safe to leave the house unprotected. Clouds only cut down ultraviolet exposure by 20 to 40 percent. If you're up in a higher altitude, if you're on snow or sand or light colored cement, you're reflecting those rays right up into you. And that increases the intensity as well. Although there are plenty of sunscreens marketed specifically for children, adult sunscreens can work just as well for them. Sunscreens should have an SPF of at least 15, 30 plus for lighter skinned people. Waterproof or water resistant sunscreens that protect against both UVA and UVB rays are the best since they'll protect you against sunburns and signs of aging. All sunscreens should be applied liberally in a thick coat 20 to 30 minutes before heading outside and they should be reapplied every two to three hours. If a child's in water, however, or is doing a lot of sweating, that child's gonna lose that sunscreen more quickly. That means it's a great idea when the child comes out of the pool or out of the water, the lake, the ocean, to get that sunscreen back on again. Although there has been some debate over whether infants under six months of age should wear sunscreen, the American Academy of Pediatrics has made a recent determination. We feel there's no harm for applying sunscreen to localized areas even under six months of age. Keep in mind, however, that when a child is under six months of age, the adults are in total control of that child. And we don't have to expose the child to sun if we don't want to. But sunscreen is not the only method of protection. Clothes offer the simplest and often most practical means of sun protection. And don't forget the eyes. They're more sensitive in children than they are in adults. So sunglasses that block at least 99% of ultraviolet rays are not just adorable, they're also an important safety measure. She enjoys wearing her sunglasses, but it's because, you know, there's some funky sunglasses and she thinks it's pretty funny to do. Mackenzie is only nine months old and Mackenzie's less inclined because she's teething. And so she teethes on her sunglasses rather than wears them. 
so hopefully the hat makes up for the difference. Besides giving them sunscreen, shades, and shelter, what else can a mom or dad do? I think it's also very important for parents to set an example. Children learn from their parents. If the parent wears the hat, if the parent applies sunscreen regularly and frequently during the day with exposure, the child will learn that that's an important thing to do. Finally, although not everyone sunburns easily, no one is immune to skin cancer. So parents, keep them covered.